1966, Beach Boys leader Brian Wilson felt pressured by more progressive groups like the Beatles and decided it was time for his minstrels of fun and son to grow up. The Beach Boys' breakthrough album, Pet Sounds, angered some people, including the Wilson's father. Dennis explains. Then when we changed from, let's say, the surfing songs and the car songs went to Pet Sounds, they thought we were nuts. They had a yeah. formula of the surfing campaign, and when you gear a company, thousands of people selling that, and you change it to, let's say, something a little more artistic, you make them, you grow up. More recently, though, they've emerged as a top live act, and they've even had a few hits. They've been together a long time, but Dennis Wilson scoffs at any suggestion that they're going to break up. Yeah, I will be a beach boy on stage if they have to take me with a... Uh up there with a wheelchair. I feel like at those times to, to be surfing, sing about it. It was like a dream come true to be able to, to do what you wanted to do in life. You know, instead of having to take a job or, or do something you really didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. I felt very comfortable with my life at that time. Yeah. That must have been kind of, uh, you weren't doing anything you weren't really singing at the time, were you? I mean, that, that started, Yeah, we were. Were you? Mm -hmm. We were singing together as a just because we love to sing yeah. when they're like eight and nine years old on the way to uh, where did my dad work? Air research. Friday nights he'd get the check and he'd take us all out to all out to dinner. You know. That's where we started. Was that? Was that? Come down, come down from your ivory tower in three part harmony. You know, we're just singing about what we're doing at those times in our lives. You know, so this wasn't something just going on in California. You you were personally involved. We all were personally involved yeah. in cars, the beach, and the girls, and you know. And as you get a little older, I guess the lyrics changed. You know, mm -hmm. the the stories changed to uh, more romantic mm -hmm. adventures in life, and then to. Should we introduce your barber, by the way? Well, that's why we have <laughs> Say hello. her. Hello. <laughs> exactly what kind of influence did the four freshmen have on you guys? I think harmonically, they were probably the foundation mm -hmm. of the Beach Boys harmonies because we're more or less singing four-part harmonies, four- and five-part harmonies. The high-lows, too. Oh, had, yeah. had a little, what happened little to the high-lows? I don't know, but they were really, uh, they were really great, too. Sure they were. But the, the arrangements of the, the four freshmen were, at that time, so ahead of time for me. They, they were, the parts were actually perplexing. I mean, you, could, you couldn't figure out how and how could they possibly come up with that kind of an arrangement mm -hmm. to where it was like a, a mobile. Something, it all worked together, but it, yet it was so different. Mm -hmm. I think that had a, a tremendous amount to do mm -hmm. with our arrangements. But we, I think we applied more, what do you call I call it now white punk, or just kind of a punky bubblegum sound at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, with those kind of arrangements were great. The duality of the two would seem to work. When you did uh, Help Me Rhonda, and it was in 1965, was it really a Rhonda? Because this question was asked, you know, a thousand people used to no. call me on the radio and say, Hey, I wonder if there's a Rhonda. Who's Rhonda? You know what? I don't think there was. It's just a great name. Somebody made up uh, Rhonda. <laughs> yeah. I mean... The Japanese made up Honda. At that time, it was probably yeah, yeah, one of the right, right. greatest albums. How long did that take, and what kind of effort went into that? Oh, God. You know, Brian... We should, we should have Brian. We should yeah, be talking about that him. was a tremendous... That was a, a move that a changed musically. Brian went to... You know, Brian actually, while the Beach Boys were on the road, recorded over half of the album at home with musicians in town. Mm -hmm. There's a whole new concept in recording in a, an approach to uh, getting a sound in the studio. I think, Brian, that's when the doors really opened up for Brian musically, creatively. I, it was phenomenal for him. That's when it all started for us. Yeah. Being able to be th where the group could be home to record and yet be away, and then Brian was so fruitful at that time. He could anything he wanted. He, musicians, he called them up, and he made some good songs. You got your, come home and do the vocals. You got your own, I should explain, your own facility here, Brother Studios. And just a beautiful place. And mm -hmm. I don't know how much money you got sunk into this place, Dennis, but it's got to be a ton. Carl and I, Carl and myself, we own the studio. It's not like the Beach Boys studio that the boys recorded. Oh, yeah. It's just Carl and I love recording. River's song, is, it sounds like a very elaborately produced song with the choral work running through it and all that. Who helped you out on the vocals on that? Um, I got the Double Rock Baptist Choir. Whew.
come and just sing a couple lines, you know, in the song. Mm -hmm. And they, were, they, God, they learn quick. You just sing out the parts, and they got them. You know? mm -hmm. You've you've written a couple of songs even in the past with the Beach Boys that were kind of melodic forever, uh, which was a, on the Sunflower album was a really really nice slow ballad number. Have you always been tending toward the softer side? Um, no, I just guess that the ones that I like the most that I've been involved with in the early days were slower. Uh, the new album I'm working on now is much more. Uh, I might, you could say rock and roll mm -hmm. than the the one now. Mm -hmm. How how did it feel? You know, this might be a question that you've been asked many times, but have you ever felt in awe of your brothers? Total, total. Oh, uh, I, <laughs> I love. I, you know, you love your brothers. There's a, a love, but then yet there's a. Uh, I admire Brian so much. Uh -huh. you know, he's made me laugh so many times. And, and lightened my heart at moments where it needed lightened, you know. Did you did did all of you manage when when Brian was having perhaps a, a bad day, or if he was having a bad period, did you find that you would all pull together to try to help each other out the because you were brothers? The family, yes. Yeah. Did that lead to difficulties too? You know, like I've heard it mentioned that mm -hmm. that Brian once said, "Well, you." If you have problems with people in the Beach Boys, you just can't kick them out because they're your brothers. You have to work with it. Were the problems ever so tremendous that it led to a lot of hassles between you and Brian or you and Carl? Mm, not between the brothers as much as uh, Michael and Alan. Mm -hmm. The brothers, for some reason, trust each other more than other people would. I, you know. I'm not trust is a, is a very bad choice of words. I think it would be brothers can communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, they, mm -hmm. because you grow up together and there's three guys in the same bedroom your whole life. You know, you you know how one may approach a discussion and how it might end before it even starts. You know, mm -hmm. depending on who's the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's been some talk that. Um, there was a, a sort of a rift that was happening between Mike and Brian. Was was this the case? Were they getting no. into a lot of discussions about how to lead the group? No. To leave the group? No, not leave it. To which direction to take the band? Um, the I don't know if the Beach Boys have a direction, direction. You know, I think the, the Beach Boys are music. And it's, you know, they record music, and I think the direction is in the music as far as music meaning melodic mm -hmm. Mike Love is not a creator on that level He's, he writes lyrics and sings melodies that Brian teaches him mm -hmm. so as far as the direction would go on a let's say head level I, I know absolutely that Brian is that direction so wherever Brian would go Mm -hmm. I would follow and support. Which of your songs that you've written is your uh, your very favorite? And the older songs, truthfully, I kind of I don't know why, but after I, I write a song or something, I record it, I feel cringe a little bit. Really? Yeah, I, I'm a little insecure. <laughs> yeah, I really, truthfully. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I can tell that. You're a very modest guy. I know, favorite, that right my away. favorite one is uh, Who Made My Moonshine? It's on the new album. One thing that really blew me out was I saw the concert at Oakland Coliseum with Chicago a couple of years back. And the thing that really amazed me was that it felt like the music that you were playing was coming out in waves and like the whole audience was just getting carried by this tremendous wave of positive energy coming from the music and you could see the audience like bouncing in time with what was happening yes. but they were also moving subtly closer to the stage it was like they were being so taken in by the music that was happening that there was like a vibration like a harmony that was being set up between the band and everybody in the audience and that blew me out because when Chicago got on you could sense that their music was sharper and, and people were backing away. And 
to experience that, I had never experienced that with any band that I'd ever seen before in my life, and it was just like almost hypnotic. And oh, wow, shit! What a compliment. Thank you. Well, it was like uh, tremendous love energy coming out. It's. I think. Um, I think if you love what you do, it's you, it's obvious. The smell of a rose and the smell. You know. I mean, it's very obvious that. Some people love what they do and some don't. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be great to be loved. You know, I'm not saying it's in greatness, but if you put your heart in it, that's what the success is. I think. It, it seems like like. Uh, I would love to think that every show would be like that. You know, I would love to. But do you feel that way when you're playing? Do well, I, any of you? I feel absolutely. That way? It's a very humbling experience to be able to play for some people. Mm -hmm. you know, and it and. It is, it is the greatest, it's just wonder. it's great. There, there seems, part of it seems to be that there is a level of love communication between all of you on stage, well, you know, just, just Imagine together. being up on stage and having people look at you and want to hear you, it's a, there's an, you, you talk about energy, people, lots of people, even ten people looking at you, their attention to you is, it's, um, it's a, profound experience it is a true really happens the feeling you're the first one to actually record a solo album and you come out with an album that that is different than anything that we've ever experienced before from the beach boys except possibly some of brian's later things did you feel that your head was moving in a different direction than the rest of the people in the band or do you feel that the direction you've taken with this album is complementary both. Uh, there are certain things in music that I alone would do, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I, I feel it all supports, you know, there's the, the, the positive energy from the band, Carl and Brian behind my record, you know, they're, I'd take it around, I'd do record something and run to their house and play it for them and go, oh, yeah, hey, well, you know, without, without their physical participation, but yet at the same time, their part. You know, mm -hmm. you I mean, Brian has made predictions of where he thinks the album will go, what singles should be. You know, it's funny to watch how Brian would have done it, and then Carl. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, is Brian have anything to do with helping you with this album, or is this totally none whatsoever? A, none whatsoever. Nothing. But do you feel that his influence is still I think in with you? Working with him, of course, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you know, it will sound like Beach Boy record in points because I am a beach boy and many of the vocals and vocal harmonies I am doing alone on the beach you know so there's it's going to sound mm -hmm. a little like a one part of something what was Brian's intent in going back to sort of a simpler sound with the last couple of beach boy albums that was his intent <laughs> just going back to good old rock and just roll just having fun yeah his the new album his adult child album strangest album I've ever heard and his vocals are the best I've ever heard him. I'm really I'm, I'm elated with the new album to be. Mm -hmm. It's really going to be a surprise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't know where it's coming from, but it's it's positive again. And it's, Does, it's do each one of you create in, this may sound like a ridiculous question, but do you create in different ways? Like will your energy be different when you're creating than Brian's will be or Carl's will be? Uh, it can be, and it can all be the same. I've been, Carl and Brian and I have been in my bathroom at home, banging on the sink, singing three-part harmony, you know, to the, you know, writing a song to Brian alone, and we're just sitting in a room watching him, or, you know, mm -hmm. every possible, all I, for myself, that's all I do, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, before I walked in here to speak with you, I had to get on the telephone, make sure that the machine was going to, you know. Mm -hmm. I am addicted I guess that's the true sense. To music. Or to absolutely being involved in not just the sound of it and the emotional experience behind it, but the, the manufacturing of it, the making of it, to, the, mm -hmm. to, to sharing some space with you on the radio. Mm -hmm. you know? How much of an influence did your dad have on, on what was happening when, when he it's was alive? Tremendous. He said, I don't know how many dads have done it or said it, but he said, son, you got to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Honest to God, the kids need people need rock and roll music. Rock and roll music is very important. 
he, he called it contemporary rock and roll music, not, you know, new. And he thought that the Beach Boys had a very important place in life, mm -hmm. especially being his sons, too. And um, he supported us, to, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Were there were there times when when there were conflicts between you and your dad over oh what was happening? Oh God, happened? are you kidding? <laughs> no, n we've never had a conflict with my dad. Yes, many, mm -hmm. many. I mean, he used to uh, on stage if we would swear when we were younger, he would uh, fine us a hundred dollars mm -hmm. for certain words. You know, certain words were less. I think uh, <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's, it was a uh, grand experience. He'd stand in the audience and shine a flashlight in his face and smile, so uh, to make sure that we'd smile once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> How about your mother? I've heard a couple of interviews with your mother where she just seemed to be really in awe of of what you had done. Like one interview that I heard mentioned that she could hear you singing in the car. You used to sing in the back of the car, yeah. and um, um, it. From that point on, she knew that you were going, you, the three of you, were going to wind up doing something in music because she said she just was overpowered by what she heard you doing in the back of the car. Friday but nights. Friday nights, going to get my dad at work, and he'd take us out to dinner. Yeah. My dad was the um, frustrated songwriter, right? Uh -huh. The stage was set, and he never could get, never got a hit. <clears throat> so he was, you know, it was fun. It was a, a very unusual childhood to grow up not embarrassed to sing in front of your family or, or a family that sings together. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a tremendous therapy. Or, I don't know if you've ever been in a room full of people and there's a piano, right? And somebody says, hey, come here, you sing this part, and then you sing this. And you see people kind of, you know, it's like they freeze a little bit. But to overcome that freeze is uh, it's a great experience. It was just always kind of you know, it's like the smell of bacon at home. How about yourself? You were always regarded back in the early days as being sort of like the male figure of the band. You know, you were the guy that was the surfer, the the lady killer, whatever. Did yeah. that really have a lot of effect upon you? Uh, in, in the sense that <clears throat> I believed it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I... I fell down real hard. Mm -hmm. I realized that uh, it's fun to read that stuff and see it and have girls faint and blah, you know, all the... But when you get right down to it, you're just as uh, vulnerable as the next person or alive. And I don't know. I, then it was important. Now it is not... I, you're some 12 years older, too. 13 uh, years older. 17 years older. Yeah. So... It's not important to me if I'm a, a fox or a, an ugly, you know, I don't, I don't care. It's not where my heart is. Mm -hmm. So you find yourself now looking for, for, for a soul level in people rather than maybe just the outside. Is there anything else? No. <laughs> That's the truth. Where, so, do you, where do you see your music going from what you've Right to what down? we're just talking about, I hope. I just feel it's all in the heart and expressing yourself and sharing that with other people and people sharing and and maybe maybe just uh, that's all maybe that's just enough for me to do mm -hmm. you know that's, I'm like the one little grain of sand on this planet you know just hold up my little grain of sand <laughs> Do you feel something running through you when you're constructing your music? Do yes. you feel like something yeah. is just taking you over? I am at this moment itching to jump on a plane and, and, and uh, go there and record. And then it just like all comes out? I just can't. I love it. It's fun. It's like driving to the ocean and there's a hill, right? And you're in the back seat of the car. Carl Brown I used to do this. Mm -hmm. It'd be almost to the top of the mountain. It's right there it is. You see the ocean. It's so much fun. I, it's, I just try to relate an experience to the feeling that the closer I get to the studio, the more fun I have, you know? Do you find yourself meditating before you actually go into the studio to try to get everything clear? Mm, I find myself meditating in moments of stress more than I do about to go somewhere to have the feeling of excitement. You know, I don't feel... I meditate when I feel I need it. 
Uh-huh. You know, One thing I wanted to ask you is, is before you go on stage as a band, do you have like a group meditation? Do you? We have, many times. Does, does that help you? Sure. Sometimes it does, and then sometimes it doesn't. Mm-hmm. It depends. I sometimes wonder how much pressure was you uh, was there on you as an artist to put out a formula song for radio airplay. Um, Did you feel on my, that? I can only relate to you on my album by myself. Uh, Pacific Ocean Blue is that I don't care. It's an album, and it's uh, I, there's no formula. There's it just is, and it's fun doing it, and that's the way it's going to be, and I'm sure Brian feels the same way. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I can't speak for everyone in the, in the world, you know, but I know that it's a hobby. You know, it's a love. It's not a, a business. But yet, at the same time, to be very truthful, there is a business, because if you don't sell enough records, you don't get to go back and make another one. So there is survival. Do you feel, though, that as part of a band, which is, is somewhat of a legend, that you are really in that position that if your record doesn't sell, that the company is going to drop you like they might a new artist? No. The Beach Boys, believe it or not, it's ridiculous. So maybe 30, 40 albums are out there in many all the repackages. and There are so many records sold every day. It's, it's amazing worldwide. It, I mean, I don't... if we stopped today and would never make another record it would they would continue to sell as long as there'd be a record industry Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's uh we're over the hump that way i think you call it it's beyond uh the top 40 beach boys are no longer involved in the top 40 race or need to be i just like to have a good time be an example and rock and roll and and it's an a, a honor to speak with you. And uh, I want to thank you. I want to move this microphone here so I can shake your hand and say thank you very, very much. Well, thank you, too. You're very welcome. This, it's been yeah. really nice. Yeah, thank and you I know you, you're busy and you got to run on. And yeah. I think that's a good place to yeah. just kind of close off right now. Just want to go back to the studio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>